With some herbs in the bag. And it reminded us of the Everything you do there, this man the same spot. So we said we had to get a He ain't moved in years. Can you put that next one? One day, it's your so the people he gonna say, "Hey, come up every city and left you with that." Cause you know what that first thing he you know, know what that peacock is. You gonna give me the scan? Mm. That's that gonna make me get a the scan. Come out good. <laughs> he gonna go in some of the bags. Man, that's too mix it up in the glass. Sir, it yeah. might look like some dirt, some leaves, some twigs, and some rocks. On. You better drink that shit, man. I'm just making it clear. Oh. Drink it, please. <laughs> <laughs> and so, we was, drink it. Don't get no food. I drank them rocks and that tree is getting dirt plenty of times. And I could have went, I'd be walking slow, like I hope he say something to that. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I bet he ain't coming. They don't call you all the time. I bet he ain't saying that. So I'm walking slow. He do like this. Hit the ground. Oh, that man come sit. He gonna give me some medicine. <laughs> so, oh, I'm gonna say this on tape. Have you ever? And the people about, uh, in Tuba would not want me to say what I'm about to say. What size you? What size you? Okay, yeah, okay, because I'm talking about the mosque. Okay. You're right, so I do not need to say the third thing about, I do not need to say what I was going to say about the mosque. I'm not going to say it. Thank you. Because the people in Tuba would not want me to reveal this, so I'm not saying that on camera. But I'm going to tell you all. So, um, the last thing Sheikh Abdul Mama said he left that would take you directly to God was his Kasides, his writings. One Kasai is enough. If you're reading Sindidi, that's enough. I, I wanted to teach you all this Kasai today. I didn't get to it. Magic belt. It's six lines. <laughs> y'all ever heard this? Y'all ever heard of Magic Belt? A lift my main. Y'all remember those cartoons back in the day where they have on the power belt? The superheroes to put on the power belt? Mm -hmm. Y'all never seen that before? Yeah. They got that from the super. This is one of them. You put this belt on. <laughs> This belt is specifically for magnetism to bring people to you. And I'm gonna give you the name when you cite to go with this belt. And you're gonna call me and say, take me. I don't know how many people carry my story this week. <laughs> yeah, see, uh, this is from Sikki Bafar. I don't, have, I, don't have, I don't know how many years I had this belt. They made this belt especially for me and Cooper. And you can see it's got the talisman with magic squares and everything right there. And it's got a whole big, you can see it. It's another big talisman right from here to here. And, you, and then um, this is how you lock it. You put this, you put this behind my hand, put that in there, and lock it. And you can bark and shake it with fall. Put that on there, and the lock it. If you pay attention, this, this belt got spirits with it too. The angels, Ruhani. If you pay attention, once you put it on, you can feel like a. Just pay attention to the energy once you put it on. That's your gift. I knew I was giving it to somebody. I didn't know who I was giving it to. Enough about it. Yeah. Don't give it to nobody. Yeah, I was like, man, that, man, that right there touched, touched me too much. Let's see who we got from. 
So when you hear the teachings of Islam, you say, that sounds like something my grandmama said. That sounds like something I heard my mama say while she was making cornbread. Because this wisdom should resonate with your being, your nature, your essence. So we come to represent these teachings from the highest master to walk on the earth of West Africa, Sheikh Ahmed Obama, Kadi Murasul. So we start with our Fatiha as a gift to all the names that we mentioned, and especially Sheikh Ahmed Obama, Sheikh Ibn Afal, Sareen Sayyid, Sareen Balo, to the living Khalifa in the holy city of Tuba, Sareen Muntaka and Baki, the living Khalifa of our order looked like something out of a Star Wars movie. You see the shape, he looked like Yoda's older brother with the same eyebrows. This guy is mystical. And he's living right now. Danger, watch yourself. He's mystical, I'm telling you. So, Like these prayers, our living Sheikh Salim Babakar Bo is a manifestation of Sheikh Ibn Afal in this time period. I've met a lot of mess. I've met a lot of masters. I've sat with a lot of masters. I gave my bayat to a lot of masters. But the master we're with now is the living manifestation of Sheikh Ibn Afal. And the people in the village will tell you this, but I'm telling you my personal experience. Serene Sheikh Bamakar Bo is so humble, he'll be sitting in a gathering with everyone, you won't even know he's the Sheikh. He gonna have on the same clothes for about a week before he changes his clothes. When it's time to eat lunch or dinner, he's going to come around and, and serve the people. So one night we were getting ready to have dinner. We were all sitting there waiting to have the dinner. And Salim Baba Karbo was walking. He normally wears black with the black scarf like Shaky Rafal, the rat. And he was walking up to uh, where we were sitting he shape shift. He turned into shape even fuck. Mm -hmm. Well, I was wide a fucking way. Excuse my language. I said, "Huh?" Oh. He took some steps in the form of shape even fall and turned back into Baba Carbo, who lived in the village. That's when I said, "Oh Lord." Mm -hmm. The people in the village say. He'll show you who he is if your heart is pure. If your heart ain't pure, he's not going to show you what I saw. So, I saw this in January when I first got there, but I didn't take my bay out with him when I seen that. Mm -hmm. I was like, I gotta let this marinate for a while. Mm -hmm. I better stop before I tell the whole story. But I just gave him my bay out last month. I just took my initiation and I told him, I said, listen, I said, now that I found Sheikh Ibn Fall in the living form, mm. after I give you my bayat, I'm not giving nobody else my bayat. After meeting Sheikh Ibn Fall mm. in the living form, I'm not giving it to nobody else. So he's the last master that I'm taking bayat with. Inshallah. So we do this uh, Fatiha for Salim Baba Karbo, Shaky Rafal, Salim Sayyid, 12 times. Aoudi la ibn Shaytan al Azim, la hawla wa la kawata ila ibrahim wa huwa al Azim, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad, 
There's a Sufi story about a sheikh who was manifesting the hidden power of la ilaha illallah in his teaching. And we know la ilaha illallah has seven syllables. La ilaha illallah. Seven. You got seven chakras. Each of these seven syllables goes with the seven chakras. There's a meditation technique in the book back there called Sufi Meditation where we explain how to visualize la i la ha is in the heart. La i la ha il a la. The seven syllables are going up the spine with the seven chakras. So when you're chanting these words of power, in ancient Kemet, they called it Hakau. In ancient Kemet, they chanted words of power. They called it casting spells. If you think about it, when you write something on a piece of paper, you're spelling. <laughs> so words have power. Allah said in the Holy Quran, I spoke this universe into creation by the power of Kun by a kum, be and it is. So when you are chanting this la ilaha illallah, which means Allah is the only reality, la ilaha, everything is an illusion. Il Allah, only Allah is real. You're affirming the reality of the oneness of the one true living God, Allah, and negating the possibility of anything existing with Allah. This la ilaha la is the beginning of the path and the bifall say la ilaha la is the beginning of the path and it's the end of the path because our beloved noble Ali has said the closest place to meet Allah is in your heart and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him has said Allah does not fit into the heavens or the earth, but Allah fits into the hearts of those who believe in her. And when I say the name Allah, I love to say her. Because Allah is more feminine than masculine. I hate to tell y'all in this, but Allah is more feminine than masculine, sister. Allah has 99 names. If you study the 99 names of Allah, most of the names are feminine in nature. Ar-Rahman, Al-Latif, Al-Ghafur, Al-Ghafar, Al-Wadud. All of these names are feminine in nature. So, this Allah resides in the hearts of the human beings. Our Prophet Muhammad Islam said Allah doesn't fit into the heavens or the earth, but Allah fits into the hearts of those who believe in Allah. And he said, for everything there is a polish, and he said the polish of your heart is to recite La ilaha illallah. I ain't no Hindu, but don't push me. I've read so many Hindu books. If some guy in an orange robe would have showed up, I would have been chanting, Om Bur Uva Swaha, Om Tat Savatur Vrunayam, Bargo Hodi Vesjadi Mahi, Dio Yonat Prachodaya. That's one of the most powerful mantras in the Hindu tradition for God realization called the Gayatri Mantra. But thank Allah, a dark-skinned man showed up on his necklace and claimed me. What happens because I know you got soul, if you didn't you wouldn't be in here. Your soul will get to a certain point in its journey for Allah. 
each and every one of us has a soul. When your soul gets to a certain point in yearning to be with Allah, the soul shoots off a, a you know how when you break down on the side of the road, you light a flare, it shoots the fire up so people can see where you broke down? Mm -hmm. Each and every one of our souls shot a spark up into the heavens. Now, there's at least 313. Three, one, three is seven. There's at least 313 masters on the planet Earth at all times. And these 313 masters meet in the heavens in the astral world. So when your soul is here on earth and it gets to a certain place where it says, I have to be with Allah, I have to go to Allah, the soul will shoot off a beacon into the heavens and the light. And one of those 313 masters will say, I got him. <laughs> one of those 313 masters will say, I'm going to take his soul to Allah. One of these 313 masters will say, yes, that's my child. I will take his soul to Allah. And the masters have tafri. They have an effect on the physical plane in a way that when that master says, I will take his soul to Allah, a chain of events will start to happen in your life so that you come in contact with that master. The name of Allah, Al-Hadi. Allah is Al-Hadi, the guy. That name, Al-Hadi, will become personifi personified for you in a living human being so that that person can give you guidance to the unseen being that we call Allah. So for this seeker of light, when my soul got to a place where I had to find Allah, I went to a bookstore in Indianapolis, Indiana in 1995 looking for a ring with the name Allah on it. Mm -hmm. Because it was Ramadan and a brother came in the mosque where we were breaking fast and he had a ring that said Allah on it in Arabic. Back then, it was hard to get some rings with Arabic on it. 1995, in little cornbread, Indianapolis, Indiana, where they got the 500. We was like, yo, where do you get that ring with the name Allah on it, man? Where do you get that at? Peace to the God. I was coming out of the 5% nation of gods on earth. My name is Master Far Muhammad. I came to North America by myself. <laughs> Pete, now think about that for a minute Master Farah Muhammad said my name is Master Farah Muhammad I came to North America by myself looking for my uncle who does not speak his own language what kind of being are you that you just come over here by yourself <laughs> in the 20s By yourself, man. Anyway. A brother came in the mosque, had a ring on, and said, Allah. We said, where do you get that from? He said, it's an African man in the mall. He giving the rings out to people for free. I said, huh? He said, yeah, it was this Arab guy selling the rings. And the African side guy said, you shouldn't be selling the name Allah. So he bought all the rings from the Arab guy, put them in his store in Indianapolis and said, anybody who come to my store and they ask, he, he asked them some questions about Islam to find out they're Muslim, he gave them the ring for free. So this brother said, I went in the store and asked him to buy the ring. He asked me for, he asked me some questions on Islam. I answered the questions. 
He gave me the ring for free. My brother Hassani, who's down in Atlanta, Hassani said, I'm going to get me a ring tomorrow. <laughs> we said, all right, go test it out. Go test it out. Hassani went to the, uh, it was the African art store, it called Names African Art, in the Glendale Mall in Indianapolis, Indiana, 1995. He went in the store, came back to the mosque during Ramadan the next day with the ring on. We said, Hassani, what happened? He said, oh, gee, cool, man. I went in there, he asked me some questions on Islam. He asked me, could I say the Al-Fatiha? I said the Al-Fatiha from Emory. He gave me the ring for free. I said, oh, snap, I'm going up there tomorrow to get me a ring. When I went into the store to get the ring, he had a big poster of Sheikh Ahmed Obama, as big as that door behind the register. I ain't never seen, y'all see Sheikh Ahmed Obama's picture? I never seen that picture before. When I went in the store and seen the picture, I forgot about the ring. I said, man, who is that? Who is that in the picture? He said, ah! Start screaming and crying. <laughs> Allah is my witness. <laughs> I was like, I was like, did I say something wrong? Like, why is grown ass African man start screaming and crying? All I did was ask him, who is that man in the picture? He said, brother, I don't speak enough English to tell you who this man is in the picture. But if you want a job, I'll give you a job right now today. You can work in my store. I will hire you right now, immediately. It was summer vacation. I was a school teacher. I wasn't working. I said, yes, brother, I want to work in your store. So I stayed in the store and worked with them. <laughs> stayed with them till they closed. Came back to the store the next day. Worked in this store for a month. Me and Brother Yang got to be close. First month went by. I'm looking at the picture every day. I said, I'm going to ask him again. Who is that in the picture? I said, Yang, I've been with you for a month. You ain't saying nothing about this man in all white. Who is that in the picture, Yang? Ah! <laughs> he broke out crying the second time. At that time, I, I'd only been Muslim three years. He gave me some of the six writings in all Arabic. He said, can you read this? Can you read this? I said, man, I can't read Arabic. He said, oh, man, this is written by Sheikh Ahmed Obama. He wrote these writings. I said, I can't read Arabic. He said, well, if you can't read Arabic, and I can't speak enough English to tell you who he is, I don't know what we're going to do. Now I'm very curious. I done seen a grown man cry in the store in public twice. And I'm like, I got to find out who is this man wearing all white. True, unbelievable stories of Sheikh Sufi Ba. I waited another month and asked Nyang, who is the man in all white? Of course, same reaction. He started crying and screaming. This time he said, look, I don't speak good English. You can't read Arabic. The only way you're going to find out who this Sheikh is in the picture, you're going to have to go to my country, Senegal, so they can tell you who he is. This is 1996. He said, do you want to go to Senegal? I said, no, I have seen a grown man cry three times over a picture. I've got to find out who is this man in all white. I said, yes, I want to go. And this so happened, my mom had left her body about three years before then. My mom was a traveler. She went to three different countries, four different countries in Africa. Do you know the last country my mom went to was Senegal? Mm -hmm. wow. The last country my mom went to was Senegal. So when he said, the sake is from Senegal, and I'm like, my mama passed, but my mom brought me back. I was already Muslim. She brought back some prayer beads and a Quran for me from Senegal. Mm -hmm. And mama said, I knew this book was special. 
when I was in the hotel room. I said, what happened? She said, I had this book on the bed in the hotel room in, the, in Senegal. She said, the people came in, the women came in to clean the room, clean the room, and seen the book on the bed and said, oh, oh, no, 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 no. Then the big idiots what was telling my mom, move the book, get it off the bed. And that's when she was like, this book is special. So she brought me back the Quran from Senegal and some prayer beads. So when he asked me, do you want to go to Senegal? I was like, well, that's the last place my mama went. I probably should go over there. So I said, yes. He got on the phone, called the Sheikh in Senegal. <laughs> About three months later, I had a, a one-way ticket to go to Senegal from the money I made working in this store. So I'm telling you, when the master says he will take you, a chain of events set off in my life to where I ended up going to look for a ring in an African art store, but ended up seeing a picture of the Sheikh and lost it. Like, I gotta know who he is. From a picture of Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, I went to West Africa in 1996. Now, what's amazing is, yeah, Yang gave me the ring. After being with the Sheikh for about 10 years, I said, let me ask Yang, why he offered me a job? He didn't know me from Adam. So about 10 years later, I said, hold on, I'm going to, I, 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 I talked to Yang, and I said, Yang, this time he was all the way in Texas. He wasn't in Indianapolis no more. He was in Texas selling art on, a, on an army base. So I got his phone number from some disciples. I called Yang on the phone, talked to Yang, said, Yang, you ain't know me from Adam. Why do you offer me a job in your store? He said, brother, the night before you came in my store, I had a dream. I said, huh? He said, in a dream, I heard a voice tell me. He said, a voice told me, it's a man going to come in your store tomorrow. Trust him and offer him a job. How do you explain that? He had a dream about me the night before I went to the store. Allah told him, it's a man going to come in your store tomorrow. Trust him and give him a job. I said, what? You heard that? He said, when you asked about the picture, I knew you was the one that they was talking about in my dream and I offered you the job. So all of us here, we are what we call a soul group. Has anybody ever heard of a soul group? What's a soul group? It's like, um, it's, it's a group of people who have, um, they're in a sense like all supposed to be together, it's like a soul family, all having the same either desire and goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is what a soul group is. What would you say is a soul group? I would add on, uh, I would just add the word world view. So they have the, the same kind of question usually from childhood because they view the world in a different way, uh, almost from birth. And in a similar way among that group. How many people seen the movie The Matrix? The makers of the movie The Matrix made another movie that didn't get as much popularity but was damn near just as deep, if not deeper than The Matrix. The name of the movie is called Cloud Atlas. <laughs> you seen Cloud Atlas? It's one one, but I seen some of it, yeah. yeah Cloud Atlas <laughs> is enough to make the nigga go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the energy building taking all types of medicine. Cloud Atlas is about a group of souls that's traveling through time that keep finding each other when they come back on Earth. And in one lifetime, he was a woman, he was a man, and they changing. You might have been a man in, in the previous lifetime. You show up in this next lifetime, they went all the way from back in the days of slavery to the future with spaceships in the movie, wow. Cloud Atlas. <laughs> the same people kept finding each other and they was working on a specific mission together that was so deep. 
So all, if you want to know about this circle, watch that movie Cloud Atlas and take notes. We are a soul group under the avatar of Sheikh Ahmed Banda. Sheikh Ahmed Banda is the one who said, I'm going to take those people to Allah directly. So, we come in contact with him, we share the teachings about him, we give initiation or a link or a bayat to be disciples of the master, and once you take that initiation and that link, it's for this life and the next life. And what makes it so important is that it's good to be with the Sheikh in this life. But it's more important to have a spiritual guide when your soul leaves the body so you don't go into what the Buddhists call Samsahara, wandering from lifetime to lifetime to lifetime to lifetime to lifetime, trying to get out the wheel of wandering aimlessly. And in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. I swear, me and Krishna are friends. I can't go to a Hare Krishna temple. I start crying every time I go in there. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, the only way to break the cycle of reincarnation is to come in contact with a living avatar who is already outside of the cycle of reincarnation. Sheikh Ahmadubamba is an avatar who's outside the cycle of rebirth. So when we take initiation with the master, it's a very high concept. When the last time you heard somebody say, if you become my student, I'm going to take you out of the cycles of rebirth. You won't have to be reborn again. I'm going to take you directly into the light of Allah. This is very important. The only way out of the matrix, you got to find Morpheus. So we found him. Or I could say he found us. So this lie lie a lot. Is a key for every Asiatic school of thought. If you look at the circle seven of our beloved Noble Draw Ali, all of the chapters in the book are almost that's why the book says this was prepared by Noble Drali. Noble Drali did not say I wrote the Circle Seven. He said I prepared this book. All of the chapters in the book are almost synonymous with the book called the Aquarian Gospels of Jesus, except for chapter one. I don't have no proof. But my intuition is saying Noble Drew Ali himself wrote this chapter one. Because it's not in, the teachings in chapter one is not in none of the other books that they say this, this book might have been based off of. When you read the circle seven in chapter one, what does it say? Time never was when man was not. Oh my God. Rolling it, light it, smoke it. <laughs> Who gonna come and say in the first <laughs> sentence? <laughs> Time never was when man was not. It's incredible. It's incredible. The first sentence is telling you you are a mortal being. You ain't got no birth record. This is not your true self. This is not who you are. And in the first chapter, he begins to break down something that is so important. I ain't seen this in no other book explained the way he explained it in the first chapter. 
He said, the soul, the physical plane is nothing but the spiritual plane vibrating slower. And the soul plane is nothing but the spirit plane vibrating faster. So he said, the physical plane we live on, we got the physical plane, the soul plane, and the spirit plane. He said, this physical plane is the soul plane vibrating slower. And he said, the soul plane is in fact the spirit plane vibrating slower. So all of the planes are the same in reality, their vibration is different. And he said, we have to defeat the enemies on the physical plane to travel to the soul plane. And when we get to the soul plane, we have to defeat the enemies on the soul plane to get to the spirit plane. And when we defeat the enemies on the spirit plane, man and Allah are one. This is the whole journey of Sufism in one chapter from Noah Ali. <laughs> How can man and Allah become one again? Raising your vibration is a key. Because he told you, ice, water, steam. The physical world is like ice. You speed up the molecules of ice, they melt and become water, the soul plane. You speed up the molecules of the water, it starts boiling, the water becomes steam. That's the spirit plane. All three are the same. Ice, water, steam is the same. This physical plane we live in is the same as the soul plane, and it's the same as the spirit plane. The vibration is different. So when you take la ilaha illallah, this la ilaha illallah is from the spirit plane. So that's vibrate, the vibration of la ilaha illallah is higher than anything here on this physical plane. So when you chant la 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 you're in a physical body tapping into a reality from the spirit plane, so it's raising you up to the plane of the soul. And eventually from the plane of the soul to the origin of the name, which is the spirit plane to become one with Allah. This is why we are chanting these names. It's the most direct, direct path for God realization is to say the name. Chanting the names of Allah is direct connection to the being Allah. Allah and his names are not different. As soon as you say Allah, you're there. As soon as you say Allah, you're there. If I say flying dog, he say, huh? He say, Islam. If I say brother Azim, he say, Islam. As soon as you call the name, you, if that happens on a human level, you call the human being's name and they answer you, what do you think will happen when you call the creator of the human being's name Allah? Instantaneous connection with the divine. The more you spend in the names of Allah, the more you are in touch with your higher self. The lower self, the higher self is clear. This higher self is Allah manifesting through you as you. In fact, the aspect of your being that says, I want to seek Allah, that is Allah. The aspect of your nature that says, I want to be one with Allah, that concept inside of you, that is Allah seeking Allah. Of course, the water will return back to its source. So we're reciting these names to purify and defeat the enemies on the physical plane. Noble Drew Ali made it so simple. On the cover of the Circle 7, what did he put? <laughs> That's it, right? Look at that. 
right there. <laughs> he got a seven in the middle with four gates. Do you know this is one of the best temples in the world to teach Sufism? He giving you a complete teaching on the cover of the book. In Sufism, you're trying to reach Allah, but to reach Allah, you got to go through seven levels of the soul. And to reach the highest levels of the soul, you have to defeat four enemies. Nabs, Hawa, Dunya, Shaitan. Right on the cover of the book. In your face like a can of mace. <laughs> 5% of my nature. I'm always quoting something from the gods. So that's right. I mean, that's clear. Defeat the Nash. Defeat the Hawa. Defeat the Dunya. Defeat the Shaitan. You're going into uh, your soul. And once you get to the soul, you got to go through seven levels of the soul. I got a book back there that explains the seven levels of the soul and the four enemies. But this is the clearest teaching of Sufism that we see in the West, right on the cover of the Circle Seven. But how many people got that jewel? We know that our beloved Noble Dali was studying in Kemet around what year, 1913? The Canaanite Temple started, it was called the Canaanite Temple in New Jersey in 1913. Where did he say he was traveling at? In the, in the East, studying with the mystics? Yep. Who do you think the mystics were he was studying with in Kemet in Egypt? <laughs> it ain't that deep. Go to Egypt right now, it's 99% Muslim. The living mystics in that city are Sufis. The only concept let me give y'all the Sufi quick notes anytime Master Friar Muhammad come and say the black man is God anytime Noble Drew Ali come and say the higher self is Allah in any Islamic circle where someone says that man and Allah are one that's a Sufi talking you will not hear that concept in no other Islamic circle. Soon as somebody say the black man is God, oh, that's a Sufi. Soon as somebody come and say the higher self is Allah, that's a Sufi talking. You're not going to get that concept nowhere out of our school of thought. The regular Muslims will say, a star for a war, all to be left. You cannot say that you and God are one of stuff for a lot. <laughs> to quote Wu Tang Clan again, excuse me, miss, how can I not be God? Yeah. I love that verse. How can I not be God? How you, if Allah is the only reality, how are you going to be something other than that one reality? It's impossible to be other than Allah. How are you going to, if Allah say, I'm the all in all, every, lie, 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 Allah is the only being that exists, and you try to tell me you something other than that being? A stop for a lie to you, Mr. Muslim. You have not understood the first iota of la ilaha illallah, Allah is the only reality. Now we're not saying that the physical being is Allah, we're saying that the being giving this flesh life is Allah. You ask anybody in the world to point to yourself, point to yourself, where do you point? Why does everybody point right here? <laughs> Innately you know you are a light form inhabiting your heart. You are not this physical body. The light of Allah is living right here. And that's why you're pointing here because this is who you are. You're not this physical body. So the goal of the Sufi is to reconnect with that true light of Allah while still in the human form. Now what is the human? Islam. 
They shouldn't have told me that. H U M A N being. Who? Man being. What is who in Arabic? God. Oh, Lord. Who is Allah? So they're telling you the who man being is God being man. That's who you are. Clear as that. I'm a who man? And I'm reading Arabic and they say who is the only pronoun for Allah? That's like saying Allah being man. Straight up. In their definition, you are God. And their land, they should have taken it to something else other than who, man. <laughs> Knowing that one day somebody was going to bring us Islam and we're going to say, Allah, who, Allah, who, Allah, who are you? The best question you can ask yourself in spirituality is, who am I? Well, the answer to the question is in the question, I am who? I am that who that came in the form of a woman, that came in the form of a man. I am that who being man, who man being. It's, it can't even get no more clear. So we have to regain that state of being by practice. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way, and few be they that find it. If you come into contact with this teaching, you will not find another teaching higher than what the Sufis are teaching. You will not find a path more clear, Sayyidi Allah, than what we are teaching. You will not find a path more in tune with your nature than what we are teaching. One of the Sufi masters said, if there was a teaching greater than, than Sufism, I would have crawled to it on my knees. So, we practice and we practice practice and we practice and we practice and we practice to cultivate what some call the self-disclosure of Allah. The self-disclosure of Allah. Allah will reveal herself to you inside of you directly till you have an experience with the divine that is beyond what we call the physical realm. You have to experience divinity. Taste, they have something in Arabic called thought. Taste, you have to taste a lot. There's something that we call the God experience. You have to have a personal experience with Allah that is so real that you can't even put it in words to tell people about it. Some of the things that I've experienced, I can't even speak on it. Speak on it, God, Grand Pooper. I can't even speak on it. But it was so real, and it happened inside of my own experience. All of us have to have an experience with Allah. And you say, I know beyond the shadow of doubt that this being and everything in existence is, in fact, all of You go into a state of what we call yakin, certainty that you and Allah are one, or what they call uh, Christ consciousness. Christ consciousness is the crystallization in your being that you and Allah are one. This is the Christ. He's crystallized that him and God. If you and you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Ain't that a five percent of talk? When you have seen me, you have seen Allah. Mm -hmm. This is true for all of us, but we have to realize that state of being through the practices. So I'm going to stop right here and ask if anybody has any questions.
And we, oh, Akbar. and we definitely need to change the line a lot of law. But I want to ask, does anybody have any questions? Say eat less. 
cut back on your eating. This is a, a weapon. The weapon to defeat the lower self is to weaken it by not going to the Chinese buffet like I used to do. Man, stock a lot. Hurry up and buy. You buy. Stock a lot. I didn't say that. So, so to defeat the NAS, cut back on your food intake. That's the weapon. Okay? How what? Passions and desires. Do you know that the Sheikh said the way to defeat your passions and desires is to practice silence? Practice silence. You'd be on the bus, damn, she bad. Let me get her number. Nope. You better practice silence because it might be a trap, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a trap, Batman. I was in Philadelphia on the train. No, I was in Philadelphia on the bus. I mean, this sister was bad to the bone talking to her girlfriend. I got to get me five new niggas. What you mean? I keep a starting team of five niggas. What? She said, these five niggas I got is acting up. I need five more. I'm about to cut these niggas and get me five more. Damn. Literally, I heard that on the phone, on the button. I was, she was like, I keep a starting five. I keep five. I got five on. This is the mentality of some of these people. Can you believe she said, I keep a starting five, was telling her girlfriend on the phone, I got to cut these five that I got. Get me five more new ones. Sound like the Harlem Globe Show. I'm telling you. <laughs> false advertisement. <laughs> so she cannot control her her lower nature. Nabs, how up, passions, and desires. To defeat the passions and desires, you have to practice silence. Somebody call you out your name, you immediately want to throw some fire back at them. Do you know how difficult it is not to say something back to somebody when they talk and trash about you? Your past, your desire say, I'm gonna have to strike back. Practice silence. Dunya, the matrix. The Sheikh said to defeat the attraction to the material world, you have to retreat from the material world. Don't engage just because it's drinks is free before 11 at the club. You ain't got to go to the club and get them free drinks. The Sheikh says stay out of the matrix. Don't go engaging in the dunya as much. To defeat the dunya, retreat from the dunya. Stay in your house and do prayers, chanting, zikring. Stay away from the cobweb of the matrix. And then the Sheikh says, to defeat the Shaitan, the goal of the Shaitan is to get you to forget Allah. Mm -hmm. The goal of the Shaitan is to get you to forget Allah. Because the Shaitan is saying, no, no if, if this person forget Allah, I can get them to do anything. So if the goal of Shaitan is to get you to forget Allah, the Sheikh said, the weapon to defeat Allah, the weapon to defeat the Shaitan it's to keep saying the names of Allah. It turns out that the enemy, the enemy we thought was the hardest to defeat is actually the easiest one. As in the Holy Quran it says, surely the call of shaitan is weak. Da'if, weak. So we use la ilaha illallah, sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad. Sheikh al Muhammad said, someone who's doing sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad, Sheikh al Muhammad said, Anyone sending these prayers on Muhammad, you can learn some powerful prayers from our Sufi order to, for Muhammad. Check out Muhammad said, anybody reciting a prayer for the Prophet, oh Allah bless Muhammad, the Shaitan won't even approach you or come near you. If you're ever in a situation where there's negative energy or you feel like there's a Satanic or demonic presence, de demonic presence, all you have to do is begin to say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad sallallahu alaihi Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad al-Fatih lima uhdika If you begin to send prayers on the path of Muhammad that nur, that light of Muhammad is coming is emanating from your being and Shaitan will not approach you. So that's Nas, how do your Shaitan. Who can explain in your own words what are these four enemies that Noble Drawley got on that uh, symbol? 
Yes, uh, it's not actually the lower self, power, is attention, desire, doing it in the material world, and shake time and shake time. Yep. The devil. Yep. The devil stuff. And this is classical Sufi teachers you are learning. So those are the four enemies. I don't see it in here. Oh, Bismillah, somebody, uh, somebody in the Zoom has a question? Now, uh, we open for questions. We got uh, some beautiful people in our Sufi school. And, 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 uh, okay, let's ask all the questions. Can, can you speak on the, um, like, uh, the Ba? Because um, we, we were just, me and him was just talking about, um, you know, uh, Sadi Ba and then the Ka Ba and how they correlate. The Ba. Our master, Sheikh Ahmed Bama, is from a tribe called the Tukulor people. Tukulor are people who migrated from Mauritania into Senegal, from northern Senegal. And one of the last names of the tribe of the Tukulor is the last name Ba. Mm. So, we were blessed to travel into northern Senegal, across the river from Mauritania, to a village called Podor, with all Tukulor people, and they called Sheikh Ahmed Bamba Sayyidi Ba. They said his last name was actually Ba. Mm. Sayyidi Ba meaning the master of Ba. Mm. This is what they call him in the village, in the area of Senegal where he came from. Mm -hmm. So you see Sheikh Sufi using the last name Sheikh Sufi Ba. It's because that Ba is coming from Sheikh Ahmed Bama. Now this Ba is an Arabic letter. Mm -hmm. But it's so mystical, so metaphysical. The Prophet Muhammad says that the entire Quran is in the Al Fatiha, the first seven verses. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah ar-Rabbil alamin, Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Malik yawmiddin, Yaqan abudu wa yaqan asaini, Lina salat al-Mustaqim, Sila salatin al-Antalayim, Gherul maktubi layim, Wala dalim. Those seven verses contain the whole Quran. Then the Prophet Muhammad Islam, said those seven verses are all contained in the prayer Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, contains the whole Al-Fatiha, which contains the whole Quran. Then the Prophet Muhammad Islam, said, the entire Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is contained in the Ba. The first letter of Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is a, it looks like a half crescent moon with a dot under it. That's the letter Ba. This Ba contains the whole Quran. But words and sounds and vibration travel through time and carry the same meaning as they had in previous times. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. When we go back to Kemet, they had something called the Ba and the Ka. The symbol for the Ba was a bird. And the Ba represented your individualized soul. So the Ba is actually a manifestation of the soul. So when Allah say the whole Quran is in the Ba, He's telling you the whole Quran is inside of your soul. The Ba. So from this Ba of soul, we have another 
word in ancient Kemet called Ka. Now, what is amazing is in Senegal, you got people walking around with the last name Ba, and you got a try, you got people that have the last name Ka. In West Africa, brother, if your last name is one syllable, you are an old people. Your last name is Ba, your last name is Ka, your last name is C, your last name is Lo. The people who have one syllable last names are some of the first people to inhabit the planet. Your last name is a syllable? Y'all people been around for a long time. Ba is your last name, Ka. So in West Africa, we have the Ba and Ka represented in people from the Pular lineage and Tupelo. So the Ba being the soul, and the soul is the individualization of the spirit. And the spirit in ancient Kemet was called the Ka. The symbol for the Ka was arms like this. You go into Masonic Lodge, the most secret symbol is to do this. I'm not supposed to say that in the public. <laughs> Fuck the Masons, man. Excuse my language. <laughs> they most sick. Yeah, that's right. I wish you would. You gonna see something you don't want to see. I'm not playing. I wasn't in Africa just drinking the water. <laughs> you gonna find out. You gonna. <laughs> anyway, I ain't scared of you, motherfucker. So the symbol is like this, coming out of ancient Kemet for the car. Who were the master builders? The master builders are the ones who built the pyramids. That's us. So of course they're going to take their symbols from ancient Kemet and put it in their modern day lives because they're trying to say they the builders. Well, did you walk or did you ride across the burning sand? Excuse me as I kiss the sky. So, Ba is your soul. Ka is your spirit. A million dollar question to ask somebody is what is the difference between the soul and the spirit of the human being? This is a million dollar question. Everybody got a soul and everybody has a spirit. Come on, brother Azim, what's the difference between your soul and the difference between your body and your car? Uh, one is masculine and one is feminine. One is definitely masculine and one is feminine. The ba, the soul is feminine, and the ka is masculine. This is correct. Any other difference between the ba and the ka? Ba and the ka? Yeah. The soul is individual, and the spirit is the same spirit in you as in me. Yes. Yes. Um, the Ujali teaches that the soul is immortal. So that means that it's not two souls, it's one soul. It's more. Like it's not, it's it's not separate. So basically, we all share we all share the same soul, because he also teaches that in the in the Quran of of, of the um, Moor Shrine's Temple, that the soul has all knowledge. Facts. It has all knowledge, just like you just you just you just broke that down. That it's, it's all knowledge, and then um the the spirit. The spirit um, is more like, you know, the breath. So they say, the prophet says in chapter 38, the soul of man, that the soul, he says, reasoning, willing, thinking, and understanding, think that this, this don't call this the soul, or think not this is the soul. It is the actions of the soul, mm. but it's not its essence. Okay. So the soul, of course, obviously got to be operated by something, which is the, that would be the ka, which would be the spirit or Allah. <clears throat> Good teaching. Good teaching. Or holy breath. What I, what I had got, what my understanding was, spirit was the breath, and the soul is the, 
condition as you go when you breathe them. So your soul will be uh, the experiences that you carry with you every lifetime and continue to grow. The spirit is just the breath that allows you to have condition. Okay. Yeah. It's fine. All answers are correct. Because it's a vast subject. Yeah, it's a big subject. Yeah, yeah. I'll give it from two sources. Another teaching uh, of Christian, the best place I heard it represented, uh, represented the Ka as the personality aspect of being, and then the Ba as the self. So the Ba would be like where the attributes are, the Ka is for the, the body to sound through where you get person or her is persona or something the sound is coming through. The Holy Quran said we were made out of sounding clay. So once the attributes sound, then that's Kaaba, that's like God mm -hmm. in person or the house of Allah. Mm -hmm. That's strong. I don't get my interpretation now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, uh, the spirit, to me, is an air accumulated current. This energy that existed before us and will be here after us mm -hmm. is based on chronological order. Mm -hmm. And the spirit is what carries us the knowledge that enables us to understand Allah and our essence, which is our soul. Mm -hmm. Our soul is psychosomatic, meaning relate to the five senses. I like how you broke that down because it deals with the matrix. Mm -hmm. It deals with Satan, our lower selves, right. our higher selves. So the spirit is 720. As it is, and as it is, yeah, above, so, above, so, above, exactly. Above. That's the spirit. So you, you look at our energy and manifest with our vibrations and our frequencies. Our soul is our DNA. Right. It is never yes. going nowhere. Right. It is never going nowhere. We're standing with flesh. But in the matrix, we gotta find ourselves. Mm. And then and through Islam, I learned I self for the master. You can only do that through your inner being and identify with Allah. So now that the foundation to all things in existence, the purest form of thought, that's how we heal and activate our higher selves. The lower form is our feelings and our emotions. But you look at the bar and the car, right? right? The lower and the higher. Mm. So when it manifests itself, we need balance. Mm. And our balance comes from equality. And when you look at the four squares around the seven, that's culture of freedom, it's our way of life. Mm. Our limitations to go down that narrow road. When we travel down that narrow road, we start breathing that, not the dilemmas, not the scenarios, but the journey, the purpose that's within our soul is to get back to our originality, our original self, which is our heart. So he summed it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the purpose is to, in the ancient book of coming forth by day, going forth by night, that they call the book of the dead, it says, when your ba and your ka unite, man and Allah are one. So the goal of each individual, the goal of each human being is to reunite your ba with your ka, your feminine aspect, which is the soul, the ba, must reunite with your masculine aspect, the ka, inside of yourself, producing what we call in Mecca, the ka ba. So that ba is very important because that is your, the nature of the soul is in the syllable ba. Some people chant the syllable Ba to open the soul plane. There's a, you can this, you can chant Ba, 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 just to tune into that soul energy, to tap into the Ba. Some people say the Ba should be chanted 222 times a day for beginners, and for advanced souls, 
is 2,222 because ba, the lift in Arabic is one, the ba in Arabic is two. So when you're chanting the ba, you want to do numbers that are related to two. So it's, the ba is chanted two times, 22 times, 222 times. One of the best numbers for soul activation is to chant Oh my God. <laughs> if you are chanting by, this should not be said in public. <laughs> That's why in the ancient Kemetic system, everybody did not have the teaching from the mystery school. <laughs> if you were not initiated into the mystery school, you did not get these teachings. You had to go into the, the temple in the pyramid, sit with the Hierophant. Do you know the Hierophant was the keeper of the secret name of Allah? Hierophant is the name of the highest priest in ancient Kemet. The goal of the Hierophant was to raise you from a dead level to a living perpendicular <laughs> on the square and then took our teachings and put it in their book. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I know, right? Walking around with feathers on. <laughs> Stop, I don't want to even get into that. <laughs> Trying to rock my science. I remember when I was in the 5% Nation, still in 5%, but they had a Shriners Convention downtown. And me and the gods was like, we're going down there to build with them Shriners. They're trying to say they got our science. We went down there, a whole bunch of old white men in feathers. <laughs> Walked up to the guy and said, Assalamu alaikum. He said, you speak in my language, son. <laughs> Can you believe the arrogance? He said, you are speaking my language, son. <laughs> so he's claiming Arabic as his language. Anyway, um, so this ba, 222 times ba, if you want, this is what I was going to say, but I shouldn't say. <laughs> Has anybody ever traveled out of their body into different dimensions? One of the best ways to travel out of your body into higher dimensions is to chant that ba 2,022 times Two 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 two. Ba 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 will activate your soul and free it from the feathers and attachments to the physical plane. If you do this at night before going to sleep, your soul can travel up into the the heavens and the other worlds. Now there's five different worlds that we get into in our Sufi school, and I shouldn't be giving out no teachings on the Bible in public like that. But it's a very powerful tool to activate your soul so that you can travel on the plane of the soul in other realms. This is the Bible. And believe me when I say we use it. Yes, please. Like when you were talking about uh, the Kaaba and the Mecca and the Holy Point, so how Elijah Muhammad used to always say that um, this once in a lifetime goal of the Karma by uniting is the real Hajj. Mm. He would say that because they thought that going to the city Mecca was the Hajj, that he wanted to board the, the whole thing because it was just a sign of something else. So this was the something else that he was talking about. That the real Hajj is man becoming himself again. The greater pilgrimage to Quran called Hajj. Mm -hmm. Then we all achieve that high. We need to chant live, live, live before we close out. Yes. Yeah. You know, I was going to say that's why Sheikh Sushi or the Sheikhs are able to get there. And they're not physically in Mecca, but we know physically Mecca is within us. I mean, the car and the bar, the soul and the spirit is within us. Right. So we're going to take this. Wait, does anybody have any more questions? Yeah, I, I love questions. Let's get it. Come on. It can make, you can make it quick. 
Has anybody you ever known or have you ever heard of this story? I know that you talk about like the seven stations of the soul and you know once you you know once you read basically the third it starts getting harder and then you know you complete. But have you ever heard anybody revert back down to the seven stations of the soul? Mm -hmm. and, and if so, what happens to that individual? Do they become worse than where they were? Or you know anything? Like There's a verse in the Quran that says uh Allah says, surely we created man in the highest of highs, but man has descended to the lowest of lows. Mm -hmm. So our nature was created divine. Mm -hmm. But it is possible for you to descend to the lowest levels to where Allah says in the Quran, this person is in the state of triple states of darkness. Allah says, I put a seal on their eyes, their ears, and their heart. Mm -hmm. And this person is in the state of the triple states of darkness. Allah says, it's up to me, Allah, to remove those seals from the heart in order for them to even hear the teachings of Allah, the true and living being. So yes, it's possible. Now, the condition of the soul is flexible from levels one through four. When you're dealing with the seven levels of the soul, you generally can fluctuate between levels one through four. Level four, the soul at peace, is the hardest level to get to because you gotta defeat those four animals, enemies to get to the soul at peace. Once your soul is at peace, something might happen that bring you out of that state of peace. But once you go from the soul at peace to the fifth level, I don't see anybody dropping back down after they get to the soul because the fifth level of the soul is saying everything that, whatever happened in my life, I'm okay with it. I'm not, I'm not going to be shaken by anything. Anything that happened, I'm going to say, alhamdulillah. <laughs> the fifth level of the soul is a soul that says, I'm pleased with Allah. Whatever comes my way, I say all praise is due to Allah. I'm driving to work, I get a flat tire, all praise is due to Allah. I ain't want to go to work anymore. Stop. <laughs> Some people, oh man, I got a flat tire. Man, you wasn't really trying to go to work anyway. You should. Yeah. So whatever happens in your life, say all praise is due to Allah. Right. There's a lot of Sufi stories for that, but I'm a. I'm a... Yes, please. Um, I see a lot of brothers in the room, right? And I just want to say that I never knew a world like this existed. Mm -hmm. What? I never knew that I had something that takes me back to my motherland. And it's a correlation, a relationship, and a lineage. And I already inherited it, I just had to finally make it my own again. Amen. And you can touch bases on anything, any type of rhetoric, propaganda, ideology. I'm so serious, like, I've been searching for this for a very, very long time. I don't know where y'all heart is at, but everything that's being manifested, like he said, we're a soul group. If y'all seen me dozing, I'm just soaking in so much. Because I'm drunk. I'm intoxicated right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know? I'm not really tired. But I'm not used to the stimulation. And I just wish y'all the best in y'all journey. Hope to see y'all again. And the beautiful part about it is this, right? I'm going to close with this. This only happens when you're at your lowest point. When brothers come together and make a difference. Oh, yeah. In prison, you achieve something like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But in society, this is unheard of. This is what you call the underground movement. I mean, yeah. and the only way to go is up. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. 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 I love it. Yeah. Well, I, have, uh, I have something to say. Please. Two, two words that stood out to me out of this combo was uh, matrix and person. And I feel like the word person is a percentage of the sun. Every person is a percentage of the sun. Mm. And that's why I got out of that. And the matrix, I get out of that is my art trick. Like, my art only a trick on us. It's creating this illusion for us of, of the reality. We really in her womb sleep. But she know we sleep, so she's going to give us this dream while we sleep. So she's playing a trick. And within the trick is magic. And magic is a spark. The spark is a nothing turned into something. Because something is an illusion. So I just feel like matrix is my art trick. And we're so glad you got that jewel last year. Each one of us has jewels to share with the family.
Every, everyone in this circle has the ability to be a master of this path. Mm -hmm. Everyone in this circle, anyone within the sound of my voice has the ability to become a master of this path and teach this to others. Uh, Brother Azim left a message, I think it was yesterday or today. The shape is nothing but the outer manifestation of your inner potential. The shape is your true self in, in manifestation, so you can see who you are. The shape is your higher self manifesting, so you can say, oh, that's a butterfly. I don't want to be a caterpillar anymore. I want to become a butterfly. We say birds fly because they see their mama flying. Birds fly because if you a bird, you see another bird, as soon as you see a bird fly, you say, I can fly. As soon as you see a being manifesting Allah, you can say, oh, this is concrete. I can manifest Allah. That's one thing I like about the Sufi world. The Sufi is saying that everyone is a master in potential. No big eyes and little U's. This brother right here can turn out to be the highest master that ever walked through New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Actual fact. Yeah. All we need is practice and training. Man, listen, I'm about to go to that Shaolin school and learn that Shaolin Kung Fu. That's all the Sufi word is. You come and learn some Sufi Kung Fu and whip some ass inside of yourself. <laughs> With the teaching. <laughs> you know, this is the way of the Jedi. I'm serious. <laughs> what is this? Is this an old time religion or a new religion? This is an old time religion. Ancient science. Ancient science. Okay. 100 la la la. And then if anybody wants to take the initiation of Maya, we'll do that. Aoudhu Bilai Mesh Shaitan Razim, La Ha La La, Kuwatai La La He, Wa Huwa La 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 ha illa 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 la 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 ha
Brother wants to do a, a, a chakra healing and chakra yeah, attunement. Yeah, you gotta put this right here out. Um, and everybody can do this quick. So put your left hand on the right over the left hand. Okay. Just put it like a little bit above it, don't touch it. Just okay. barely touch it. Okay. Okay. Like touch it, but like barely. Okay. Okay. Tune us all of the shapes in it. So close your eyes. Just do this in the spinning of his chakra, the crown, and then it spins everybody simultaneously. So, I mean, you'll feel it in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's a box. It's a box. I don't know if I was cheering a little bit. It felt like an interview. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, it is. 